All right, people. Yep, ARG updated again. Again? Again. So at least they waited a little while. You know, they haven't updated since like what the end of July. So to wait all the way until early September is actually more than what I gave them credit for. I thought it was gonna be every few weeks. They got an entire month, people. So give them that. But yes, they updated their list once again. The communists just don't know and don't understand that not every deck is created equally and that means that Yu-Gi-Oh! will never be a balanced game. But they're going to keep on trying their hardest. You know, i got to give them the credit. got to give them the credit. So let's go ahead and just look at the changes. So we're just going to go ahead and pretty much just read what they have to say. So it says, Hello, Duelist. I explained in the Circuit Series Facebook group we'll be updating the ARG ban list on the first Monday of each month. All right, well, at least we definitely know that <laughs> every single Monday, people, first Monday of each month, new list. Interesting. You know, we thought that maybe Konami was taking a little too fast every three months, but not every single month. Wow. All right. Uh, some months, there may not be any changes, and we'll post no changes. Okay. You know, if they just want to keep you posted, then that's fine. Remember, the card is a major problem. We may emergency edit the ARG ban list. Okay. The goal of this is trying to make the format have multiple decks up to five or six, as well as bring some decks back that were not viable. Like I said, you can go ahead and bring them back as much as you want, but, you know, decks get power creeped. As simple as that. I mean, look at Black Wings and look at Gladiator Beasts. And those decks used to be the tits back in the day, and now they got all their cards back and they ain't doing shit. But, hey. Uh, for this list, there are changes... So I will post what they are and thought process behind them. I like that. I like that. If there's anything that I would like Konami to go ahead and take from ARG, is that when you give us the new list, can you at least put down your thought process? Or, you know, have like a fucking like meeting. Do a live stream meeting and have someone pretty much walk up on stage and then talk about the new list and the changes that you ensue with them. That would be great because... You know, a good majority of the time, we get a new list, and we're like, either like, wow, why'd you do that? What would you stop talking about that? Or we're just scratching our heads like, okay. So, you know, to go ahead and give us some reassurance on your choices, Konami, would be great. Just like how ARG is doing if you won't even make it that simple. So, anyway, uh, there's the new list. Here are the changes. And they're going to go explain what their changes are. So, let's go ahead and go down. So, starting it off, we have Regeki Band. All right. So, ARG, I believe it has Regeki, three Dark Holes, and two Torrentals. That is a lot of destruction. And, uh, destruction is actually pretty good right now. And, uh, I thought they were kind of crazy with putting Torrental back up to two, but, you know, OCG has three, but they only have one Dark Hole. You know, we each have four, you know. Here in TCG, we have one Regeki, two Dark Holes, one Torrental, four. They have one Dark Hole, three Torrentals, four. Uh, and as you can see, uh, ARG took it way more than that. They had, like I said, the Regeki, the three Dark Holes, the two Torrentals. That is six. So I guess they were like, you know what? It's too much destruction. Let's go ahead and put the Regeki down to ban. And that's understandable. You know, like I said, I would rather have Regeki ban and Dark Hole at three than Regeki ever coming back. Because it's just unfair. It's literally just unfair. If you want to go ahead and wipe the field, how about you wipe your side of the field too? How does that sound? You know, whether you use the slower Dark Hole or the faster Torrental Tribute. How about you wipe your shit, too? And, uh, hey, if I, you don't have anything on your field, then more power to you. But you shouldn't be able to have shit on your field. I have shit on my field, and you just wipe my side of the field. That's just dumb. So, I uh, thought we're going to come back with dumb, especially since, you know, Dark Hole is still at 1. And then Dark Hole went to 2, and we haven't seen any changes since on the TCG ban list. And the guy has been here to stay, I guess. So, uh, I don't mind that change on ARG ban list. That is fine. Moving on, they got another card ban. Yes, people. Yes, as you guys see. Towers. They decided to go ahead and ban towers. So, uh, they were worried about Wavering Eyes before uh, Wavering Eyes came out. So, they went ahead and put Summoner's Art down too. And ARG, Summoner's Art got two. And that's pretty much all the clear hits. And I guess they felt that um, Tower Tremble was much instead of, uh, you know, hitting Cleese. Because, uh, you know, they're very, very... Uh, communist and they don't want to kill Cleese, they want Cleese to be one of the top decks and be competitive with the other decks instead of killing Cleese, they're like, you know what, it's just Van Towers, how are you going to play Tower Turtle without Tower, right? Alright, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, the only thing is that, as a person who played Tower Turbos, that's not a viable deck right now, that's actually a really bad deck because the game is so aggressive and a good majority of the meta is composed of decks that can take out Tower, i.e. 
Necros, uh, Clown Blade Shadows, they can go ahead and go into Diamond Crab King with ease, so that's not viable, you know. You you go ahead and have a Tower Sand Field, they're like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and summon the level 4, especially summon my Trick Hatter, XC and Diamond Crab King, bam, there's your tower, it's gone. Uh, Cosmos, who not only has the two honest and the memorable, but also, uh, if they have their, um, Forerunner, go ahead and drop that, uh, oh my god, what is the name of that card? I forgot the name of that card. The one that uh, increases by a thousand, I forgot the name of that fucking monster. Oh my god, that's really bad. I forgot the, I forgot the name of it. It's so probably going to sit my tongue if I, if I look it up, I will remember it. Sorry, my phone went off there, but I actually looked at the monster, Jirigito. I was thinking, I was like, Jirigito? And I was like, wait, no, isn't that the name of that one fairy monster, the 1700 beater? I don't even know what the name of that monster is, but yeah, Jirigito. So with Honest and, and Jirigito and all that, they can easily just go ahead and attack over towers as well. And Infernoids, so of course the Nuchu can blow up towers. So... Like I said, Tower Turbo is not looking viable, and if and as a, a Klee player, I'm gonna go back just to defensive Klee. I'm gonna go back to regular Klee's Tower Turbo. Not worth it. Not worth it. I'm probably go ahead and tech one towers in. That's because you know when you drop, if you can drop one towers, it's pretty good. But I'm not gonna devote my entire deck to Tower Turbo. We're gonna play other things. But uh, they're just like you know what, Tower Turbo sucks. Let's go ahead and ban. So okay, all right, shirts to one. Necrozine Decoy, they're probably saying, like, whoa, 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 wait. Didn't they already shirk Necrozine Decoy? That was their first list, all right? Their first list, they put Unicorn down to one. Then their second list, they went ahead and copied what the TCG did, put Unicorn back up to three, and then put Shred back down to one. Now they're going to go ahead and put Unicorn down to one. So Trish banned, Unicorn at one, Shred at one, I believe, I believe Brio is at one. There's a, you know, and uh, if anybody is trying to fight against the tyranny of Necros, it's definitely ARG Vice and Konami, if you can go ahead and take some precedence off of them, because, God, I mean, even at Worlds, the deck was still viable. It just seems like you cannot kill Necros. It definitely does not seem like you can kill them. But, uh, definitely go ahead and switching, uh, the Shrit, and then the Unicorn was the wrong choice. Unicorn definitely deserves to be at one. That That's not an incorrect choice. Unicorn at one, definitely. So, um, hopefully there's upcoming list for TCG. If we have one, like I said, we don't, we don't know. When we're getting it, but if we get it, definitely Unicorn to one is a correct choice, no doubt about that. So they decided to go ahead and put Unicorn back down to one. Smart. And they unbanned Trish. All right, I could have swore they unbanned Trish before, but apparently they didn't. They went ahead and banned uh, the regular. I mean, not the regular. Heroes, they banned the Necros of Trish. So the Necros of Trish is banned in the ARG format, but they never unbanned the regular Trish. And you know. Here in TCG, we unbanned regular Trish, and ARG saw that really wasn't doing anything, so they're like, screw it, let's unban it too. Okay. Alright, and that's it. Restricted 2, you can clearly see, Compulse Evacuation Divine. That's, mmm. Alright, how I feel about Batgirl, because, you know, definitely everybody goes back and forth, everybody has their own opinions, so if you guys want to know my opinion, I feel like the trap cards and the spell cards that are at 1 are deserving their spot at 1. They've earned their spot at 1, and I don't think they needed it. You need any testing of anything other higher at because they'd probably been there and compose is in the same boat uh compose goes up and down with popularity sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad uh and you know when necro is being the strongest deck yes i can see why compose is bad because necro is the strongest deck but that doesn't mean that compose is bad it just means that it's just not the right time for it you know think about it if like for example if if like satellers and shadows were the top decks then, oh yeah, Compulse would be great. You go ahead and so, shut off Fusion? No, Compulse. You know, you go ahead and go into that, uh, that, that, uh, Trigger? Yeah, you're gonna bounce anything, but how about I bounce you too, Compulse? And, you know, you go crazy, Nag. So, uh, like I said, it depends, it depends. And, like I said, it just goes up and down in popularity. Right now it's down, and I just don't feel like, you know, oh, well, this card's not being played right now, let's go ahead and put it up. I've never been a fan of that, because, like I said, it can be played later, and you're going to be regretting the choices later, but I guess you're like, you know what, we make changes every month, and we can make uh, changes whenever you feel like it, so since they're more consistent with their changes, and, you know, the possibility of an emergency at it, I guess they're like, you know what, screw it, Compulse Head 2 is fine. All right, moving on, we have One for One, and I guess we'll go ahead and throw Bubble Man in here, too. So, uh, One for One. That card is not a one-for-one one at all. It's actually a neg one because you have to pitch a monster 
A lot of people forget about that. You have to discard a monster, or send a monster, not even discard a monster, send a monster from your hand to your graveyard to go ahead and summon a level 1 monster. And, uh, like I said, this card has been at 1 for a cool minute. Uh, definitely seems like they're maybe promoting a little bit more Synchro play, and uh, definitely some more Infernoid play, because Decatron, I'm assuming? I don't know. Like I said, they go ahead and post the reasons at the bottom, so let's go ahead and find out if I'm right, right? Alright, Bubble Man. Okay, I believe when they unban Stratos, I want to say they put Bubble Man down to one. And uh, I thought that was a little extreme. You know, if they unban Stratos, I think two Bubble Man is fine. You know, I, I really hope that if they unban Stratos, that maybe they'll go and turn into something that's not Denclaw that deck, because I'm getting real sick and tired of just Denclaw that deck that's not even Heroes, that's literally Denclaw. So maybe if they give you Stratos, I don't even care if you turn into a little bit more aggressive, that's fine, but. It's not Denclaw, and I don't think Shadows, you know, adds too much to the Denclaw formula, you know. Like, why use my normal summon to search for uh, Shadow Mist when I have Triple Rota and Triple E-Call and the Hero Wibs to go ahead and search for Shadow Mist and then Mass Chain it instead, you know. So, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like Shadows brings anything new to the table of Darklaw, Denclaw that deck, but maybe possibly you might see a different variant of Heroes with Shadows, so I really don't care. If he stays banned, I don't care. If he gets unbanned, I don't care. I have, you know, I'm in passive to Stratos. I'm never gonna say free my nigga Stratos, but I would like to see heroes do something different besides the tank law. But yeah, they put Bubble Man down to one, and I guess they're like, you know what, that was a little bit extreme. Even OCG has Bubble Man at two, and I was like, you know what, it should be at two. So there you go, Bubble Man at two. Moving on, uh, El Shadal Fusion and Monster Gate. So I'm assuming Monster Gate, I can't remember what Monster Gate was at. I'm, I'm assuming that they, they, it was at one. I'm not sure if it's at one or three, I can't remember. I'm not sure if they was like screw it three and then are they putting it back down to two or they're like you know it's at one let's put it up to two for in front of it. I'm not sure. Of course in TCG still at one. But El Shadal Fusion they just keep on giving Shadal shit. They 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 hit Shadals and then every single list they're like all right a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more like you're pretty much to the point of null and voiding your hit. Uh, when of course uh, the first list they were like El Shadal Fusion to one construct to one, and at this point. Maybe not El Shadal Fusion, but definitely the Construct should be at 1. You shouldn't be able to go Construct in the Construct in the Construct in the Fusion like that. It's dumb. You know, multiple Constructs is dumb. You know, one Construct would be totally fine. But then next list, they were like, oh, well, we hit Shadals too much. They're not topping anymore. Construct to 3. Okay. And now they're like, El Shadal Fusion to 2. Like, what next? El Shadal Fusion to 3, and then you just completely annul and void your hit, and you're like, oh, we regret hitting Shadals in the first place. I said, you need to decide. You want to hit Shadals or not? So you, there you go, people. Two El Shadal fusions. And like I said, I didn't want to hit El Shadal fusion. It hurts the consistency of the fusion. They should have the consistency of the fusions, but they shouldn't be able to loop the hell out of Construct. That's the problem. So they can have three El Shadal fusions. I don't care, but Construct needs to be at one. That's my opinion on it. And uh, now we have Low and Longer Limited. We have Debris Dragon, people. Yes, Debris Dragon. Uh, they put it. I believe they put it up to two. Uh, and it was at two before Dragon Rulers, and then Dragon Rulers came out, put Debris down to one, and hasn't moved since. But now they put up the two, and they're like, you know what, screw it. Let's go ahead and put up the three. So I think with three Debris Dragon and two one for one, it definitely looks like they're maybe trying to put a little bit of Synchro play up in it. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like it. And as you can see, Rescue Rabbit. I guess they're like, screw it. LCG has three Rescue Rabbit. Let's have three Rescue Rabbits. Let's go ahead and, you know, like Evil Sword, Evil Swarm do their thing. I don't know. I mean, it's not like Evil Swarms would be that good. You know, uh, Cosmos can probably handle Evil Swarm to an extent, you know. Uh, it depends on how they handle Ophion with uh, Farm Girl and, you know, good good bitch. I mean, sit down, right? Ophion, sit the fuck down. So, um, you know, Necros, I mean, at least they put Unicorn back to one because Unicorn was going to be the tits against Ophion. Just being like, bam, summon your effects negated, and now let me go ahead and summon this Trish. So, yeah. But, I don't know. Rescue Rabbit, I don't know. Maybe they don't, maybe they're like, screw it. Let's go ahead and have Dino Rabbit again. I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of Rash Rabbit. I think it's a little bit too crazy, you know. OCG has Summoner Monk at one. We have Summoner Monk at two. We have Tour Guide at one. Like I said, when summoning summoning monsters in the deck is a very powerful play. And at Rescue Rabbit, even though you're summoning normal monsters, I put you in the same boat because what you've done with Ophion, what you've done with Don Rabbit has, um, hidden, you know, Login Dog has definitely uh, made you earn your spot at one. So. Let's just move on from that, because that was just a makeshift deck that wasn't even making Konami money. That was literally a fucking makeshift deck, and no, it's no surprise that he got hit. Alright, next we got Tragodia. Okay, I mean, 
Gores is at three. And what is Tragodi at in TCG? I think it's also at three. Uh, no, I think it's at two. Yeah. I think maybe no CG is at three. I think Trag is at two. Gores is at three. And definitely Trag is stronger than Gores. It is. You know, you can actually have cards on the field. You can go ahead and pitch the same monster, take that monster permanently, copy the monster's level, like see with it. So Trag is definitely stronger. And, you know, you probably compare Trag to Gorg because it's like, oh, well, you know, depending on how many cards you have, Trag could be weaker. But, like I said, Trag has more versatility. Definitely does. I can go ahead and drop Trag on your last attack and then pitch a monster next turn go ahead and pitch and take your monster permanently as long as I pitch the same level. So, like I said, Trag has more versatility than Gores. Gores may come out stronger depending on what you're sending with tokens better, but the fact that I can have other cards on the field and I can go ahead and uh, have more vers versatility plays with Trag, it's no wonder that Trag is still at 2 while Gores is at 3. But they're like, screw it, let's go ahead and put Trag up to 3 too. So, Trag at 3, Gores at 3, um, I'm not sure if... Uh, Cosmos are going the whole let me block with Trag and Gores and not running your back row route. I think they do play back row now. But, okay, that's fine. And then the last card, which I think is like, really? Uh, I mean, they're like Rabbit up to three, so that engine in plays are back. Let's bring Rack Morale talk. So it's just like, I've never been a big fan of the Artifact engine. It's a very powerful engine. Uh, not only being able to go ahead and distract your opponent and make them, you know, regret popping your back row because they're going to get Morale attack, but sent them into Morale attack. Into summoning a 21 beater non targeting destruction is very powerful. And you know, whether you drop it on Necros or whether you drop it on even even Cosmos, for goodness sake, you summon that Forerunner, yeah, I can Morale target because Morale target is not target. Uh, it's just very powerful. So uh, I definitely think it's going to be an engine that is going to come back. They're going to realize, like, whoa, 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 wait, this is wrong. This is wrong. Because I guess they're assuming, like, oh, well, who cares about the engine when it actually it's one of the more powerful engines, you know? So I would probably keep. I would probably switch it. You know, I've always wanted to switch it. I'd say Sanctum. I'd say Sanctum to one and Moral Talk to three. I would be fine with that. Just to give artifacts more of a bite if you're gonna play a pure artifact deck. But <coughs> the whole engine back just be splashed. I mean, think about it. Fucking more. Think about it. Fucking summon. Uh, go ahead and and oh my god, freaking artifact Cosmos. You know, go ahead and special summon that slip rider, pop a card, summon Morale Attack, pop a card, overlay those two into a Pleiades. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, that's probably going to be a thing. That's probably going to be a thing. So, uh, it's another light engine for, of course, uh, Shadals. And like I said, it's just another engine. A very powerful engine. It, des it deserved its hit. And like I said, whether it was Morale Attack or Sanctum, it deserved its hit. It's hitting the LCG, it's hitting the TCG, but, you know, I guess they're like, fuck it, let's go ahead and have it. So let's go ahead and look at their explanations. So let's go ahead and start off with uh, Regeki. So here's our top price behind the changes. And I like I said, I wish Konami would do this. So Regeki Ben. Uh, mass monster is, removal is available easily through Triple Dark Hole and various other cards. They're two torrentals. Unlike most of those, Regeki is a very swingy card and can steal games that otherwise would not be winnable. Okay, that's, that's fine. You know, they say if you want to go ahead and Dark Hole your field too, that's fine. You want to go ahead and throw the dark call at me when you have no monsters? That's fine too, but it's risk versus reward, and no, there is no risk when it comes to Regeki. So, okay, that's fine. I didn't want to unban him anyway. Uh, towers. This card does not allow your opponent to play the game. Like I said, it depends. It really depends. If your deck doesn't have a way out of it, then sorry. You know, like I said, it's not my fault that Konami made a very strong monster, but it, I wouldn't say that it doesn't allow your opponent to play Yu-Gi-Oh, especially with the decks that are popular now. Terrible idea. Terrible idea. Like, does it make your opponent play unorthodox plays? Yeah, sure, but, you know, so does other plays, too. So, whatever. We thought this is the easiest way to fix uh, Klee Fort Turbo. You mean Tower Turbo? And still make Klee's a, a playable deck. Other uh, changes would make the deck unplayable. Not unplayable, just hurt, you know. Like I say, if you, if you want Klee's to be more playable, you could always just go ahead and put Summer's Art back up to 3. You still got your two scouts, you put Summer's Art up to three, you banned towers, so just, there you go. I said, maybe I'm being a little bit biased, but it seems like you you want to go ahead and snap Tower Turbo's neck, there you go. So you can go ahead and just leave Cleese alone if you want to. I said, should Cleese be hit? Probably, but if they don't want to hit it, then don't then don't hit it, you know. So give them the Summer's Art back. Alright, moving on. Uh, Necro's Unicorn. This is the strongest and most flexible card in Necro's Arsenal. Yeah, it is. I'm glad you noticed. And it's a floodgate card that is easily summoned time and time again. Yes, glad you noticed. 
Uh, Knuckles is also still too strong and needs to come down a little to even the plank field. So even after all the hits that ARG has done, Knuckles are still too good. But if they watch Worlds, they, they would know that. So uh, moving on, uh, Trishula, Dragon Eye Spare versus Dwan. This card has had rel uh, relatively little impact on the TCD meta as a whole. True. Uh, mostly due to its inaccessibility in most decks at the moment. Okay. It is incredibly powerful, yeah, but we believe at one it is fine. All right, that's fine. <coughs> All right, let's see the ex explanation of Compulse. All right, this is an incredibly powerful trap card. Uh huh. But it happens to be bad against the best decks, best deck in the format, Negros. Okay, like I said, if you hit Negros hard enough and people start stepping away from Negros, Compulse is gonna be good again. So that's just your fault. So <laughs> it's your fault. Compulse is bad because Negros are good and you won't do something with Negros because Negros are stupid. Decks hard to kill. There's now a few other large decks such as Klee's or Cosmos. Eh. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So, it's who's done a whole play. No surprise there. It's who's done play in TCG as well. Despite this, we don't see it running, ruining the game like two, as it is not nearly as extra deck based as it used to be. Okay. I am assuming that they were talking about how. You know, bouncing monsters back to extra that to get that nag on your opponent so good. Uh, so, okay. Your game. I wouldn't play Compulse up to three. I'd keep Bombless Warring, Compulse, Torrental, Ring of Destruction, all of them cards. All of them cards have earned their spot at one. Anyway, one for one. Another powerful combo piece for Syngros. I'll talk about that. But also a powerful reception for Fertilizer. Oh, talked about that too. Ooh. One point for Daniel. Increases the explosiveness of synchro strategies by making it easier to access the powerful recursive tuner and level eater. All right, and it makes this card makes two decks better: synchros and front rights. Yep, called that. All right, what'd you say about Bubbly Man? Uh, there are enough defensive cards in the top strategies to stop this card. Okay, I'm assuming you the OTK. Uh, also, all the quick OTK enablers and long slash drafts are slower cards like Call of the Haunted. Uh, heroes still need a boost to get them. Even with the other decks, because they're still underperforming. I mean, what do you expect? I mean, really, what do you expect? Everybody wants to jump on the hero deck. There's other decks to play, and really, I just am just out creeped. You know, there's there's not much you can do to heroes to make them like, oh my god, I want to play this over Necros. So you can go ahead, I guess, and keep tweaking it. Like I said, you're being a little bit communist. Like I said, not all decks are created equal. So you see a deck a little doing. Just a little bit bad, and you want to go ahead and give them the tits. But right. Mel is fine. All right, uh, El Shadal Fusion Two. Commander Shadals list live and die off of this one card. Okay, this back to two was a like I said, should have kept that at three and then hit Construct, but you did it the wrong way. So you're like, huh? Even though we get them three Construct, Shadals aren't doing well. That's because you didn't give them the Fusions back. Just flip it the other way around, whatever. Let's back it to with a strong competitive boost for Shishals. It shouldn't have too much of a negative impact on the format. That's it. We're just going to be seeing a lot of construct looking like huge. <coughs> Plunger Gate. This card gives Infernoids a boost as well as can have an impact on other decks. With Raw Magic Library Bandit in your format, this card can come up to two. Okay, I'm assuming that someone maybe went like Summon a Monster and then went Monster Gate and then bam, Royal Match Club and went stupid with it. I don't know. I really haven't seen that. Seeing a little bit of Summon a Monk and it seems like maybe reasonably better, but I guess your opponent calls four and they definitely will. You will miss your Royal Magical Library. So, okay, I can see that. I can see that, but you don't really play any other monsters besides what? Royal Magical Library and maybe Summon a Monk? I don't know. Chicken Game. FTK is dumb. I have not seen that deck do well at all, so it's just another stacking OTK deck. FTK deck. Anyway, so there you go. So I'm assuming it was that one, they went ahead and put it up to two for our So good luck in four nights. You've been doing pretty well. So ARG, you have two. Have fun. Debris Dragon. Debris Dragon is not any more overpowered than any of some of the cards like Coach of the Wolf Bark or Satella Knight Altair. Like right, I said, Altair is not bad. It's just Deltair summoning the Nab. If Deltair summoned the, the Nab with the effect negated, it could stay at three, but you know. When you go, I'll tell you our summon Denab, that's a plus, and then Denab searches you for another card, that's a plus two, that's when, you know, Tell Nights like, eh, so I get your point. If you want a competitive, interactive, synchro strategy, uh, this going to three is a must. Okay, well, I mean, let me see what you can do with three, the Breeze Dragon. And, uh, Rescue Adam. This card is doing nothing in the current format. 
uh, because it's at one. <laughs> Normal monsters need an incredibly powerful synergy with the rest of the deck to be worth playing. No. No, you could just throw in a couple of dinosaurs and, you know, he healing of Shrope and some evil swarms and go done with that. No. Uh, and nothing competitive except maybe Ignite. You can call them competitive. Oh, damn! Shots fired! Whew! Can abuse that at the moment. This card will, ha will help that deck get better. Damn. Damn. Seems like you really shot Ignite in the dick on that one. That was kind of cold. You didn't have to go there. <coughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna list. Trank. Gore's at three, and arguably a stronger card that fills the same role. No, I thought we talked about Trank is stronger. But, uh, Trank can go three. Alright, whatever. You're, you're good. Alright, and Artifact Engine as a whole encourages interacting with the opponent and promotes strong decision making. We don't see the Artifact Engine as a whole hurting the game too much. That's what you'll say. If the engine is dumb, the engine was always dumb, so. This, this, all of this, the whole encourages interacting with your opponent, promotes song decision. This literally sounds like a bunch of bullshit to me, but have fun. So, I apologize for this video being so long, but I want to go ahead and get my two cents, get their two cents, and there you go. So, if you play on ARG, have fun, earn your money. I think it's like, what, $5,000? So, yeah, if you can get, get money off of this. So, like I said, I don't, I don't care what ARG does. I really don't, but have fun with it. Tell me what you guys think about ARG changes. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Like I said, I'll think of, I was thinking about not doing it, but I'm like, fuck it, I did the other two, why not do this one? So, thanks for watching the crowd support, and I guess I'll see you guys. Hopefully, we get our list soon for TCG, or uh, next time ARG does another list next uh, month on the first Monday. Alright, people, thanks for watching.